Hello and welcome back to our third episode of our Unexpected Update 7 playthrough where we started off with blueprints available to us from the get-go with the hope of us using blueprints to create modular sections to a factory which you can see we've done here. We've got a section dedicated to smelting, foundries, constructors and we've also set up a section for assemblers here which we're going to be talking a little more about later. And I can safely say with us 50 hours in game unlocking the blueprints early really isn't that big of a deal because you don't have the power or the resources you need at the start to really capitalize on them but with that introduction out of the way today we're going to be covering the factory making it look pretty whilst also sorting out more production lines within the factory i want to get some reinforced iron plates on the go some rotors stators and motors maybe we'll do modular frames probably not because we've <laughs> we've got a lot to do in this episode and i also want to cover all of this and get the lines all being automatically sunk so that we know exactly how much power we're consuming at all times rather than the power going on and off. I do have a quick confession to make though. At the end of the last episode we built these assemblers for AI limiters. Well I forgot to save the game and do any recording so I built this whole bus which is taking the resources to the other end. You can see we've got the yellow for the Caterium line and there's also over in this section the off green aqua green i guess you might say for the copper and i was asked in the last episode why do i color code copper like that well it's just that this is what reminds me of copper ore it's copper oxide and also why we do the iron as red because it's iron oxide in my mind it makes sense but if you do want to check this bus line out yourself it's pretty simple it's just catwalk crossings and a conveyor across it and then also using the new supports that we have to do multiple lines above uh, well you can check out the game over on patreon we offer it as a bonus we update the save at the start of every month and you'll also get access to all of the blueprints that we're using in this as well but i'll be showing you them as we produce them and there's our ai limiters so with that out the way let's get into the video the first thing that i want to do now that we've got these resources going into this section is to build another resource bus just over here for the rest of the resources which you can see behind here. We're going to have to run all of the resources from this section here along to about here then run along here to another bus line. We're going to hopefully make sure that they all line up down the center just to make it easy for us to do. So I'm going to do the rest of this and then once we get started on the bus I'll uh, show you what I have land. I've added these little conveyor walls to try and get a good idea as to where I want everything to run and I think we're going to run these in sets of three and have them run along here and then we'll probably close this off in some sort of, oh I quite like this to be glassed actually thinking about it hmm I'll give that a little bit of a thought but these will run all the way around and out through here to go to a storage area I've placed the window here but decided against running it along the end instead I went for adding the resource colors for the the resources on the line i'm not sure if we'll keep it like this because i'm worried it's just going to become very co colorful <laughs> i don't like color um i do want to give this factory a kind of color template a, a color palette to, to work with but i'm not sure if having lots of different colors is going to work with this but these resources are all heading to a storage area and then the other thing that i've done is i've built these cable constructions which are obviously going to be stored but also used later on in the various manufacturing lines. From here the next thing that I wanted to do was to start working on the exterior walls. We want to have some supports, we want it to make it look quite nice and also have some walling uh, windows along here. I'm also very very much aware that this is looking all very similar and I definitely do need to and want to work on a way to make each of the sections though they're blueprints stand out in their own right. With the factory being quite large I wanted to add some windows but at the same time not just have it all as a line of glass so we created this blueprint of windows so it's three windows followed by a space followed by three windows I'm going to show you how to do that now and how we place it here is our first blueprint of the day so we have a one meter wall 
basic wall along the bottom. Then we have a one meter concrete wall on the left, followed by a one meter down wall, and then a one meter concrete up wall on the far side and having a space in the middle. Next, we're going to be placing a, another basic wall followed by the inverted ramp walls in opposition to the concrete. And then from here, we're going to add our three windows. Once this is done, we're going to grab the one meter ramp walls, but as the, the basic wall version, like so. And then we're going to grab the top one and I'm just going to push that underneath on this side and do the same on this section as well. And then from here, we're going to place the one meter walls just along there. And that is it. That is how we've done the wall for this section. It gives it this lovely hexagonal shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octagonal, octagonal, octagonal. I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, we've got this, now let's place it on the wall. Placing this wall is a bit of a pain, so we've had to place down these foundations first, and then from here we're grabbing our blueprint, and we're going to be pushing this up until it's in line. There we go, perfect. I've also added the opposite to the top as to down here, so it looks kind of mirrored. With the window design done, the next thing that we needed to do was some pillars, and I played around with lots of ideas, and I've came up with this. And yes, it does look complicated. This pillar was a pain to do. It's two foundations wide, and then in the center we have this single layer of metal pillars, followed by, on the outside, two big concrete pillars. And then on the outside, we've done some big metal pillars built into these to, to give it a staggered kind of austere look. And then from here, we've added using the road barrier trick and then replacing it the wall up the side. And then across here, we've added on the top seven sections, which are white, the basic walls, we've added the road barriers for this little touch of detailing here. And then on the outside to this, we've got just a walkway across, and then we've got a staircase running down. I wanted to give it some kind of like heat sink grills. I'm not sure if it works, but I'm, I'm keeping it uh, at least as long as we have frames. And from here, we can run resources in, down the, the middle, should we wish, but more importantly, it's gonna be running power. And then on the top, we've got a big foundation, well, two meter foundation uh, in concrete, and then a slope here. And the ramp's gonna be important because on top of this, I think we're going to be adding some other kind of support on top because I think we need to double the height of this. After that, all we did was run the walkways along here so that it's trimming the whole of the supports ready for when we're going to add the next section. And from here, we're going to be working on the reinforced iron plates and the rotors and the motors and the, the stators because I don't want to start working out how tall this build should be until we've got at least all of the basic resources produced, which means we're going to have to set up the reinforced iron plates line. Now for that, we're going to want to have a screw constructor line. And this will take the iron rods from this line, I do believe, yeah, straight to here. And then we will have the screws running around to this section, which is going to be the assemblers for the reinforced iron plates. Now, speaking of these assemblers, all we've done for the assembler blueprint is take our open segment, which we took based off of the original smelter design, if I remember rightly, deleted one of the power wall sections, like so. And and then from here, we've placed three assemblers so that they have enough space for the elevator holes against the wall. But we started off by placing these in the center of the foundation. And then we've added the assemblers either side of the middle one. Then we've taken our floor holes and placed them against the edge. And then from here, we've grabbed our elevators and place them. You can do it through the hole, but they're currently bugging out with the blueprints at the moment. Or you can do what I did, which was build the manifold and then take the elevator from the manifold line directly up into the assembler. And this will stop them from acting weird when placed on a blueprint. And then all we've done on the other side is to make sure that we have a merging line like so, and then done the same 
this side. And from here, all I wanted to do was have a single line or walkway through and then just save it and you can use it as you wish. For this build, it means that I'm going to be placing another three of these in a line because we want to be producing 60 reinforced iron plates per minute. Then we'll probably do the rotors here, the stators and the motors. Also, I think we need to extend this upwards. In fact, I'd like to tear down the factory that we have there, seeing as we're not really using it anymore, and then run, maybe do something with the foundation so it looks like it's running more parallel to the coast rather than a little bit disjointed thanks to the right angle sections here. And then maybe I'll play with a little pool in this section, adding a curve in just to add a little more detail to the build to make it look a little bit different and a little less symmetrical because I feel that quite often and I strive for that and I want to challenge myself a little bit more in this build. I've just got rid of the previous factory and now we're doing a little curve. I think the curve paralleling paralleling the coastline would actually look really nice. So I'm hoping this works, but we will run that all the way along here. You can see how we're, we're starting to get a nice curve around followed by a parallel to the coast here. We will now turn just a touch more so that we're just skimming this edge. And then from here, we'll probably do a curve around the side of the factory. Of course, we need to finish the factory before we do that. We've got to do our rotors and stators next. And then I want to do a curve here, but we won't do that until we have the next section of the factory down, which kind of leaves us with adding some more supports up here. I'm happy with how these look at the moment, but they are very chunky and they're also very complicated to repeat. So rather than do this above, I want to slim these down and add supports that are pretty easy to do so that they look like they're supporting the factory without being too complicated and time consuming because these took a fair amount of time to develop. And what I've developed are these. Now these aren't blueprints. You probably can make a blueprint out of them, but I've chosen against doing that because I'm only doing a handful. Maybe I will later on, we'll see. For this, we're going to start off with our big concrete sections and they're going to be flush against the wall, but also cutting in to the middle here. So we're going to clip into both of these. These are actually metal, a little bit of a mistake there. And they're going to be three high. And then we're going to add these small pillars just in front. So you can see there is a tiny one meter placement for them to give it this tooth look. And then from here, I'm going to place this on the very top and run this to this section here. So where there's the 15.81 meter angle. And we're going to place two of these followed by the small pillars. And with that, you can build a pretty simple support, which looks great. There is a little bit of Z fighting. So if that bothers you, do consider just covering that with something like a beam to stop that. At this point, we need to start the rotors, the motors, and the status. For that, we're going to need to place three more of these. So we have this one here for the rotors. And alongside this, we're going to want to place the status. And then we're going to place the motors here, although we're out of reinforced plates. But the good news is that we were producing them and have them all here. So we have enough. We'll place that here. And then we're going to make, I might want to swap that round actually. But we're going to get these resources. Yeah, I'm going to want to do that. Sugar thumbs. Oh, I hate deleting all of these. I need all of these outputs on the far side to go to here. Give me a few moments. A few moments later. I had to run out and grab the steel rotor alternate recipe. So now we're taking the steel pipes and the wire that we've got to create both the rotors and then now that we've swapped the section around, we've also got the stators this side with all of the outputs for the mergers heading out this side, which means that they flow directly into the motors to produce these wonderful motors. Off you go. They're going to head to storage over there. And the next thing that we need to do now that this is all running is look at adding some more levels. And I think we're going to have to add at least one more level. So I'm going to fill this all out with the empty sections that we have around the walls, possibly two more. Looking at this, the easiest way for us to build the next floor is to set up a blueprint. We've added this scaffolding so that we can easily look around the build. And we're going to place our four by four grid just here. I've also got this 
open segment, which you've seen us use... Oh, balls. Which you've seen us use before, except this time I've removed the inner wall. So it's just like one of these sections. We've got one without a wall and we've got one with just the edge wall. So we'll be able to place this all around the outside, which is what I'm going to do now. I've just realized this is like the third blueprint that we're going to be uploading to the Patreon for this save. Guys, if you do want to save yourself time and do the same blueprints that we're using, you can either make them yourself or you can support on Patreon where you'll get these as an added bonus. I'm going to continue running around the side doing all of this and we'll also fill the inner section in maybe with one of these. So it lets me place it. Yeah, one of these. And once that's all done, we'll talk about the actual decoration for the outside. This may look really large. Or well, maybe it doesn't, but I think with the added support, it's going to work perfectly. Uh, you can also see in the corner down there, I've added the little curved inlet or pool there. I think that's going to really add to the feel of the build once we've actually built this, because we're going to be using a lot of little sections for water as pools. Maybe we'll do some interesting like outside decoration as well for it. But with it being so tall, we are going to have to add some more supports. Also, I've just realized we need to, we need to paint that and change the material. Material. I will do that in a moment, but we're going to be doing these supports now and I want to do something with signs I don't want to use too many because they are causing some frame loss at the moment And here we are another blueprint. This one's very simple It's just an extension of what we did all the way over there and you can see I've added one little green I, I kind of want to do more. I'm, I'm gonna add one more just just one more here that that will be enough Yeah, that look well, Okay just just one, one more sign, I promise. There we go, okay, so that looks really, really nice actually. Looking at it, maybe we can add another? Yeah, one more, we'll, we'll add one more. If we add those two and we'll do them the same color green maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. Just thinking maybe we should have one more set of signs up there so it's like repeating the dotted section. Okay, I've made my decision. This here is what it's going to look like. We're going to snap that in so that it's in line with that and uh, well, I kind of made a slight adjustment. I added two full parallel lines of signs, but it's fine, it's fine. I won't add any more. I'm not, I'm not gonna promise that, no chance. We'll see what we come up with. Of course, now that we've placed this, it does need to be supporting something, which is where this is coming in. I've added this large, chunky concrete support, and we're just going to run this up to about there and we're going to fill this out so that we have this arch running all the way along here. Yeah, this could work. This could definitely work. I've also worked on the front. We've added these gentle angled ramps. Uh, they're the diagonal ones slowly going up in a kind of an apex shape. And then we've added the circle foundations to create these big round supports, followed by some signs in the middle and then playing around with the materials. I really like how this has turned out but you can only see the sign if you're looking directly down the middle. I don't want to add any more signs at this point to the outside of the build because I am a little bit concerned that we're going to suffer from the, I don't know what we should call it, but the death of the, the death of the save due to signs. So on the other side, we're going to have to do something else. And I'm thinking maybe mirroring the ramp archway that we had on the side and then adding some brutalist cutouts along the side. That way, it doesn't look so much like Costco, which so many people in stream have said it looks like. I mean, it's driving me insane. Join me in stream, by the way, if you want to comment on the how much my build looks like Costco. <laughs> We're gonna change that in this episode. I've yet to add the brutalist section that I want to do on the side, the cutouts, but you can see we've added that archway. We've also put a roof over the top and used a bit more glass. And if we check out the top here, you can see how we've played around with different materials, the glass, the, the roofs, the, the concrete and also the pillars to give this build less of a symmetrical feel to it. 
and to give a little bit more detail. And I'm really happy with how the front with the new angled rooftop looks. At this point, let's look at the blueprint so that we can create the side cutouts that I want to work on later. Here we are working with the cutout section. We have four wide and four deep along the outer sections with the exception of this side, which is going to be the front facing side. And we've got a cutout here and we're going to bring these up in line with that and have this glass window here. We'll play around with the walls so that we, we make use of the foundation and the walls that we have here. But I think having these nicely spaced might look quite cool on the outside and we'll do some kind of ramped roofing and then we'll have to work out some supports underneath. Time to get rid of the Costco look. So we're going to place one of these every alternate four places. I've added a little roof section with the pillars along the side on a slant. I think that really adds to it. I'm very aware that this episode is getting pretty long. So I'm going to quickly do this. I'll uh, show you what I've come up with for the walls and the supports after. And then we're going to tie the whole factory up to some awesome sinks. It's quite a drastic change, I'll be honest, with it poking out so much, but I do think it works with this. We're going to add some basic foundations just below. I'm going to keep it super simple. We're just going to zoop the large ramps that are inverted, three down, then we will grab a large foundation down so that they're almost like legs either side. And then I want to do something for the wall. This wall design is what I've finished with. Uh, I've, well, what I've decided to go with. We're going to really simply just run these straight down the side. And then from here, we're going to just above it, mimic the same pattern with the basic wall. And on the very bottom, we're going to connect this section with the, the basic wall. But I also want to repeat this section here underneath with the concrete to have this little cutout. I don't know why, I just like it. <laughs> and we're going to repeat that both on the outside, but also the inside as well. I mean, perhaps we can go and repeat this later on, but I'm worried that by doing this, it'll make it look a bit like Costco again. And I'm trying to avoid that. And there we are with all of them done. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm really interested in seeing if you like the added jagged sections and the walls, or if not, just let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. But we're now going to move on to sorting out the awesome sinks so that we always have constant power running and we'll be able to see everything running on the lower floors as well. Before that, we're going to jump over to the area where we have all of our storage for the time being. And I'm going to break down all of those lines where they're going from the elevators to the storage. Here's the dog tooth smart splitter system that we've got generated. So you can see how everything's coming down into a smart splitter and then everything's running to the storage, which is below these foundations. And then any extra is being overflown up to the right, which will be then run along a merging line like this. Now you can see that everything's being overflown to the sinks that I have just here. And the only thing I would say is that there is a little bottleneck along here. So I'll have to see if we're producing too much, which we might be, especially with screws and wires and cable all going down to the same line. But it could just be that we have an oversaturated amount of resources. So we'll we'll have to see what happens then. Finally, we have everything running as planned. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. Balls. <laughs> Well, I guess I know what we're going to be working on for the next one. I think we're going to have to either double or maybe even triple our power, but we'll we'll take a look later. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, Trevor, and Beowulf, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, The MN Wolf, and That Dude, A Double. W, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Chick Norris. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.